Two years ago, reading the book written by my ancestor, Josef Rink, I came across the subject of civilian prisoners in Corsica. At that time, I didn't know that during the Great War, thousands of civilians were detained in France. Uh, my project examines the fate of, fate of civilians de detained and the roles of the Swiss peace mission of Father de Courten in Corsica, as well as their importance for the prisoners. During my project, I took a closer look at the personal memoirs of Rink and two other prisoners and compared these with documents in nine European archives. I researched scientific publications and official resources available online and took a research trip to Corsica uh, to visit the former prison camps in Morsilia and Oletta. It is remarkable how little documentation has been preserved in the archives on civilian uh, prisoners and the Swiss, uh, Swiss peace missions uh, in Corsica during the Great War. The documents are short and concise. Sometimes these records only contained a couple of pages. The most comprehensive documentation on peace missions can be found in the monastery archives of Einsiedeln and the ICRC archives in Geneva. In Corsica, one can only find documents in the archives de la Corse du Sud in Ajaccio. The research for scientific publications on civilian detainees in Corsica was also very sobering. The existing work is devoted mainly to the military, hist uh, military history of the Great War, the political systems and economic, socio-political issues of the era, but not to the civilian prisoners. France established detention centers for prisoners of war and civilians immediately after the outbreak of the Great War. All citizens of the warring parties, ranged between 17 to 60 years old, were to be imprisoned and detained in camps situated very far from the front lines of the war. But in fact, small children, very old people, even over the age of 70, were also imprisoned. Rink was one of these prisoners. He was a German Catholic priest and researcher from Danzig. He was born in a very wealthy family and was well educated and spoke fluent French. In the summer of 1914, Rink spent his holidays in Spain. Like many Germans, after the outbreak of the First World War, he planned his journey home by ship from Barcelona to Genoa and then by train through Italy and Austria to Germany. At the end of August 1914, he was arrested with other passengers and the crew in Marseille when the ship was forced uh, in the port due to a typhoon raging in the Mediterranean Sea. Shortly after his arrest in Marseille, he was sent to prison on the island of Chateau d'If and then on the island of Frioul, both close to Marseille. Uh, four weeks later, he was moved to Corsica, where he spent three more months in the camps Casabianda, the next five months in Cervione and almost ten months in Morsilia. The longest period of time, almost two years, he was a prisoner in Oletta. The last day of his internment was on the 17th of July, 1918. Here you see two of the camps that I took pictures of when I had the journey there. In the three memoirs, I analyzed the, two, the first two years of the war, um, and the, those are described as a very difficult time. The ancient prisoners in Chateau d'If and Friul as well as the camps in Corsica, Cervione, Casabianda and Morsilia were very crowded. The camps in Casabianda was evacuated in the spring of 1915 because of appalling conditions and the increase in diseases and death due to malaria. The camp in Morsilia, originally constructed and also seen down here, uh, was originally uh, constructed for between 40 to 50 monks and most was overcrowded with over 250 detainees. Drinking water and washing facilities were missing, the sanitary facilities were wretched, and the detainees received only little to eat. The camp commander was also incompetent and punished prisoners for every trivial thing with solitary confinement. By contrast, the camp in Oletta, seen above, uh, had a number of big gardens and running water. With 150 prisoners, it was also overcrowded, but the camp commander was a talented organizer and uh, was able to improve the conditions of the prison, prisoners. 
The, to, the poor diet in combination with poor hygiene and exhausting physical work led to the spread of diseases. Wealthy prisoners, however, were able to buy additional goods and food, hygiene products and services, which made their everyday life considerably easier. All the other prisoners depended on mainly external help. Uh, external assistance was provided, for example, by the Red Cross and official peace missions of neutral states, uh, as example, including Denmark, Switzerland, Sweden, and until their entry into the war, also the US. One of them was guided by Father Sigismund de Courten. He was a French-speaking Benedictine monk from the monastery Einsiedeln in the canton of Schwyz. During the Great War, Father de Courten was active as a spiritual commissioner for the Swiss Federal Council and the Vatican. In this function, he visited more than 200 detention camps for prisoners of war and civilians in France, Austria, Germany and Italy. One of his first trips took him to Corsica. As an envoy of a neutral state, he was made aware of the grievances in the prisoners' camps, both by warring parties, uh, by both warring parties, and ordered the camps to be examined during his missions. Through his skillful interventions with the competent authorities, he succeeded in significantly elevating the situation of those affected. The refusal of medical treatment by some French doctors and the abuse by some camp commanders intensified the situation for the prisoners. As the stream of prisoners did not decrease after the first months of the war, the French authorities were obviously challenged and sometimes overstrained by the organization of the camps for so many civilian prisoners. The condition in the four camps in Corsica were very different though. How well or bad the prisoners were treated depended strongly on the French authorities and the camp commanders themselves on site. The course of the war also had an influence on the relationship between the French and their civilian prisoners. It is remarkable how few documents on, the, on those civilian prisoners in Corsica were kept in Corsican and Swiss archives. There are, for example, no systematic records of prisoners or deceased civilian prisoners in the individual areas or individual years. The Corsican authorities fought every day with various practical problems such as labor shortages or food shortages. The documentation of the organization of civilian camps was obviously not the focus of the people in charge at that time. It could be that at that time many decisions were also made orally and therefore not documented. It also is possible that documents were discarded with the closure of the detention camps, possibly by the administration in view of its own faith and the bad living conditions from which the Corsican population suffered, was indifferent to the suffering of foreign civilians. We can only speculate here upon the reasons for these incompetent dossiers. The Swiss archives also preserved sparse documentation on the official peace mission of Father de Corten in Corsica. In Corsican archives, there is no trace of his visit. In my view, documents of eyewitnesses, such as the Book of My Ancestor, can serve as main source to answer questions on civilian prisoners in France. The conditions described in the memoirs correspond with the official reports of ambassadors, personnel of the Red Cross and others, so that they can be assume, assumed to be true. Furthermore, the memoirs of the eyewitnesses not only describe the events, but also show what they felt and thought, and therefore are a very well and rich account of the past. Particularly notable, however, is the low interest of research in the missions and the civilian prisoners. The fate of thousands of detained innocent men, women and children during the Great War vanished. Also, the Swiss peace missions are less known and explored. Even if this aspect of the Great War has been underrated by historical research until now, the issue of civilian detainees in Corsica and the peace missions during the Great War should be explored further. It helps us to understand political and legal mechanisms which protect the civilians in conflict regions and to shed light on these kinds of diplomatic processes during the war in Europe. It will, be, it will complete the big picture of the great war in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention.